Good evening. Now that I see most of you, I'm just the warm-up act for these other two heavy hitters. <laughs> um, when I agreed to do this um, program, it was back in, I think, late January. And if you remember back then, and if you remember about healthcare and where the healthcare bills were at, it was not looking like anything was going to pass. So in the last uh, two weeks, my entire sort of presentation had to change because of what's happened in Washington, D.C. Uh, so I will try to cover some of that. Um, most of you probably know the bill is over 2,200 pages long. The best summary of the bill that I got was 49 pages long. Um, so I will try to summarize the summaries. Uh, but just a quick background, I've lived, other than my college uh, days, I've lived my entire life in the Central Valley. I grew up in Ripon. My father uh, was a was a physician, so I've, I've been in healthcare uh, basically all my life. And as Jason said, I have a, a job now that in, entails three counties uh, for Sutter Health. Um, so I think I understood uh, healthcare when I was growing up as a child. I think I understand healthcare now. I don't think I understand where we're going. Uh, and that's one of my messages. And really, uh, a strong message I want to uh, leave with all of you is um, you know, why not? Um, and the bottom line is, I think we're, we, as a society, we've overcommitted. Uh, we've overcommitted uh, in healthcare. We've overcommitted in a number of other areas. Um, but I will uh, try to cover that. So tonight's uh, topics: review the healthcare reform bill. I want to talk about what I believe is the real big issue, which, in my view, was really not addressed in the healthcare reform bill. And um, if Curtis Grant were here. <laughs> he would probably do a much better job at the, at the third part. It's just kind of a sense of uh, just watching the drama and my sense that uh, America is at kind of a crossroads. Um, as we've seen, healthcare has been uh, topic number one for, for a number of months. Um, the headlines about uh, Anthem Blue Cross raising their fees, uh, this was actually used, I think, uh, you know, in, in early February, this ended up being used by the president uh, as part of his push to, to pass the health care reform uh, bill. But also, of course, on the other side, the editorial cartoons and everything else that was going on kind of made fun of and uh, made message about the process that was being used. And they didn't end up, I don't believe, if I understand what they did, uh, they didn't end up doing the demon pass, but this was um, pretty kind of interesting. Well, let's just uh, deem and pay our taxes um, was the message. So the process was definitely in question, um, but the public and I believe the media uh, actually questioned the president as to whether or not he was listening to us, because uh, the polls were very clear that from what Americans understood about the health care bill, they didn't really want the health care bill. And so, you know, this cartoon about, I don't know what you're talking about, the health care plan looks beautiful to me, looking in the mirror. Uh, <clears throat> So in, as I kind of frame up my comments about health care reform uh, on a high level, if I can, what's in the approved bill? There's a lot of different moving parts, a lot of different timing, uh, some implications that I hope, uh, hopefully will leave with you, at least some, because I really can't figure it all out. <laughs> it's, it's so complex. Uh, so in terms of the overview of the key elements of reform, let's start with the cost and the coverage. Um, you may have seen this covered in the media a number of times. Uh, it, it seemed to me personally that the clear goal was to get the cost to be under a billion, uh, I'm sorry, a trillion dollars. Uh, there was some back and forth and they found, you know, all the, all the parts of it that they put together. Uh, it's costing under a trillion, but it's $940 billion. And the deficit, deficit savings of what they passed is uh, supposedly going to save us uh, one point, I'm sorry, $143 billion over 10 years. Now, it may be hard to see, but there's an asterisk on that 10 years. That's uh, based upon the bill not including what will probably happen, which is they are not going to cut physician fees by 21%. Uh, they have that uh, out there. They've held back from doing what they've historically done for the last six or seven years. They put forward very draconian cuts for physicians for Medicare, and then at the last minute they say, well, we're not going to do that. Well, um, that's about $250 billion. So if they do, in fact, decide not to cut physician 
uh, payments, uh, we are not going to see any savings in terms of our def deficit because that was not factored in. Uh, again, 32 million uh, people are going to gain coverage. That's going to increase the percentage of, of residents that are covered. Uh, and most of these provisions take uh, effect starting in 2014, although fees and taxes will start uh, sooner than that. But it's a lot more than that. It's uh, got uh, very serious uh, ramifications in terms of the insurance market, a lot of regulation. Uh, you, you may have heard, and you, in my view, will continue to hear about uh, waste, fraud, and abuse. There is not, there is not uh, enough fraud, waste, and abuse to pay for everything that's going on. But there will be a lot of comments about that. So rather than go through this list, you've probably seen it, you have the opportunity to read it. The three that I would really point out that you need to remember are the last three in terms of very, very different changes in terms of insurance. No annual or no lifetime limits. They're mandating, they're legislating that insurance companies cannot, through health insurance plans, have annual or lifetime limits. Elimination of pre-existing conditions. Uh, these sorts of uh, uh, changes are grabbing headlines, but when you do those two and you limit the, the amount of the deductible to a low amount, that's also part of the bill, it grabs the headlines, but it fundamentally changes insurance risk. And when you change insurance risk, in my view, that will be spread to the other folks that um, do not have uh, pre-existing conditions and already have uh, health insurance. So in terms of the uh, uh, other impacts with in insurance, uh, setting up state-based uh, uh, exchanges, uh, there's going to be a, a new office set up to uh, manage those exchanges. There's eligibility requirements for employers uh, with businesses below 25 employees. Uh, and this is uh, clearly stated that it's uh, to cover legal uh, residents, not illegal uh, residents in our country. Um, in terms of uh, individual mandate, uh, this is where, in my view, it gets pretty interesting. Um, the individual, if they currently do not have health insurance and do not pick up health insurance, uh, is faced with the possibility of a, of a penalty ranging from approximately $700 per year for a single person to about $2,100 per year for a family, or look what's underlined, whichever is higher. Uh, and that uh, $2,100 is based upon a family income of 83,000. So they are very much trying to get people to pick up insurance so that there's more people insured to spread the risk of healthcare um, needs. But with uh, the combination of no denials for pre-existing conditions, no lifetime caps. Um, how many people that are currently uninsured will wait and just pay the penalty? And when they get sick, decide, well, they can't turn me down now, so now I'll go get insurance. Or people that are currently insured and are paying a lot of money out of pocket for that insurance, when they look at that bill every quarter, month, yearly, however they pay it, versus $700 fine, maybe they'll decide to drop their insurance and just pay the $700. Again, basically hoping that they're going to be uh, illness-free, but kind of protected when they become uh, sick or develop cancer. They can't be turned down. I'm not sure that that's uh, uh, what, they what is really intended here, but in my view, I think uh, a fair amount of that is going to occur, and who pays for that? everyone else that currently has insurance, in my personal view. Again, more mandates in terms of um, employers above 50 employees. Uh, they're going to be assessed a fee of $2,000 um, per full-time employee if they do not offer coverage to their employees. But note what's in parentheses. The first 30 employees are, ex are accepted. So if you're paying for your employees, uh, and you're, you have 51 employees in your group, um, I'm not sure if their intent is going to match how America is going to respond to this. I'm concerned that more employers and more individuals are going to decide, I'm just going to pay the fine per year and go bare without the insurance. Uh, 